A 28-year-old male has been found wandering around in a confusing pattern. The male is sweaty and pale. Which of the following tests is most likely to be performed first? Blood sugar check. CT scan. Blood cultures. Arterial blood gases. The correct answer is blood sugar check. With a history of diabetes, the first response should be to check blood sugar levels. A mother is inquiring about her child's ability to potty train. Which of the following factors is the most important aspect of toilet training? The age of the child. The child's ability to understand instruction. The overall mental and physical abilities of the child. Frequent attempts with positive reinforcement. The correct answer is the overall mental and physical abilities of the child. Age is not the greatest factor in potty training. The overall mental and physical abilities of the child are the most important factor. A parent calls the pediatric clinic and is frantic about the bottle of cleaning fluid her child drank for 20 minutes. Which of the following is the most important instruction the nurse can give the parent? This too shall pass. Take the child immediately to the ER. Contact the poison control center quickly. Give the child syrup of Ipecac. The correct answer is to contact the poison control center quickly. The poison control center will have an exact plan of action for this child. A nurse is administering a shot of vitamin K to a 30-day-old infant. Which of the following target areas is the most appropriate? Gluteus maximus. Gluteus minimus. Vastus lateralis. Vastus medialis. The correct answer is vastus lateralis. Medications are injected into the bulkiest part of the vastus lateralis thigh muscle, which is the junction of the upper and middle thirds of this muscle. A nurse has just started her rounds delivering medication. A new patient on her rounds is a four-year-old boy who is nonverbal. This child does not have any identification on. What should the nurse do? Contact the provider. Ask the child to write their name on paper. Ask a coworker about the identification of the child. Ask the father who is in the room the child's name. The correct answer is to ask the father who is in the room the child's name. In this case, you can determine the name of the child by the father's statement. You should not withhold the medication from the child after identification. A patient is admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of primary hyperparathyroidism. A nurse checking the patient's lab results would expect which of the following changes in laboratory findings slash elevated serum calcium, low serum parathyroid hormone, PTH, elevated serum vitamin D, low urine calcium. The correct answer is elevated serum calcium. The parathyroid glands regulate the calcium level in the blood. In hyperparathyroidism, the serum calcium level will be elevated. The chronic excessive resorption of calcium from bone caused by excessive parathyroid hormone can result in osteopenia. A patient with Addison's disease asks a nurse for nutrition and diet advice. Which of the following diet modifications is not recommended? A diet high in grains. A diet with adequate caloric intake. A high-protein diet. A restricted sodium diet. The correct answer is a restricted sodium diet. A patient with Addison's disease requires normal dietary sodium to prevent excess fluid loss. Patients should eat an unrestricted diet. Those with primary adrenal insufficiency, Addison disease, should have ample access to salt because of the salt wasting that occurs if their condition is untreated. Infants with primary adrenal insufficiency often need 2 to 4 grams of sodium chloride per day. A patient with a history of diabetes mellitus is on the second postoperative day following cholecystectomy. She has complained of nausea and isn't able to eat solid foods. The nurse enters the room to find the patient confused and shaky. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for the patient's symptoms? Anesthesia reaction. Hyperglycemia. 
Hypoglycemia. Diabetic ketoacidosis. The correct answer is hypoglycemia. A postoperative diabetic patient who is unable to eat is likely to be suffering from hypoglycemia. Confusion and shakiness are common symptoms. Reduction in cerebral glucose availability can manifest as confusion, difficulty with concentration, irritability, hallucinations, focal impairments, and, eventually, coma and death. A nurse assigned to the emergency department evaluates a patient who underwent fiber-optic colonoscopy 18 hours previously. The patient reports increasing abdominal pain, fever, and chills. Which of the following conditions poses the most immediate concern? Bowel perforation. Viral gastroenteritis. Cologne cancer. Diverticulitis. The correct answer is bowel perforation. Bowel perforation is the most serious complication of fiber-optic colonoscopy. Important signs include progressive abdominal pain, fever, chills, and tachycardia, which indicate advancing peritonitis. One of the most serious complications of colonoscopy is endoscopic perforation of the colon. Although colonoscopic perforation occurs rarely, it can be associated with high mortality and morbidity rates. A patient is admitted to the same-day surgery unit for a liver biopsy. Which of the following laboratory tests assesses coagulation? Select all that apply. Partial thromboplastin time. Prothrombin time. Platelet count. Hemoglobin. The correct answers are partial thromboplastin time, prothrombin time, and platelet count. Prothrombin time, partial thromboplastin time, and platelet count are all included in coagulation studies. Thanks for watching this video that will help you pass your nursing exams. If you enjoyed this video, sign up for free daily questions and other helpful nursing tips by clicking the link below.